Hey, what's going on? Welcome to Move Fast, Lift Heavy Podcast. This is Joe Roscoe, co-host of MFLH Pod. Thanks again for tuning in. If you've been coming back on the regular, if you haven't subscribed or rated the podcast or left us an impeccable comment, please do so. It would be greatly appreciated. If you're on YouTube, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and also take a look at our other vlogs uh, with Christian Harris, head of Move Fast, Lift Heavy. Um, with his training, uh, with some of our apparel. Um, If you haven't checked out our website yet, go to movefastlifthebby.com and you can uh, shop all things apparel. There's a couple things uh, that I'm showing you right now if you're on YouTube. If you uh, haven't followed us yet on the gram, you can follow us at movefastlifthebby. If you haven't tried out our online training program, movefastlifthebby online training Um, We have three levels, train with CH, so that's exactly what Christian Harris does, founder of MFLH. We have a peak program, someone that's looking to be competitive, still sneaking that session in around 90 minutes um, or less. And then our base program, for anyone that's looking to just be proficient at CrossFit. All right, bring them on, the founder of Move Fast, Lift Heavy, co-host of the pod, the Derek Cheater of CrossFit, Mr. Smooth, Christian Harris. What up? What up? I like that <laughs> intro, man. Big Derek Cheater guy. So, what's up? I'll take what's that up? all day. <laughs> Mr. Smooth, Mr. Smooth. Uh, what was Jeter called? Mr. October with the playoffs Mr. coming up. Mr. October. That's right. October. October is approaching. He was always good for a nice uh, take it the other way line drive to right center field. That, that used to be his bread and butter, it seemed like. Yes, sir. The deuce. So well, it's, it's like Thursday, the- man. Thursday. This it's, is it. It's Thursday. This, you know the deal. I know. Podcast Thursday. Uh, sit on a Concept 2 bike for 60 minutes Thursday. You know, whatever it might be. I got something different for you guys next week, so... Oh, wait, is this the thing with like uh, the 3,000, 2,000, 1,000 with all the air squats and the push-ups? Uh, first off, really yes. good job on that on that social media graphic. Now look, the swipe graphic with like the half text and then you swipe and the remainder of the text. I mean, you're, you got it going on. You got all the trends going from 2021 Instagram. I appreciate it, man. Just trying to learn <laughs> so- a thing or two, you know? First off, yeah, that graphic was fire, but then the description was a little less fire. It was more so like tear inducing as I was crying reading the description <laughs> of, of that of that workout. Listen, it's going to so, be a long one for sure. What do you what do you do? What do you do? Are you uh you're lying down at night looking up at the ceiling just thinking, how am I going to screw these guys next week? <laughs> <laughs> I just got to think of ways to uh i guess reinvent the wheel but it's i don't know just different ways to to go long without doing the same thing straight for an hour you know yeah yeah no yeah it's just getting that that rotation um i enjoyed the uh it was a a, uh 20 cal bike 200 foot uh stand bag carry and then a 20 cal ski for six rounds i think or eight rounds do you remember that yeah just a good good grind throw some grunt work in there that always does the job yeah it was nice to rotate from um from spot to spot but man it got real towards the end there it got real yeah i mean i love the sandbag it's 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 just Time under tension, and it gets your heart rate up, but it's nothing that's hard to do, if that makes any sense. Mm-hmm. You know? It's it's one of those that hits you after because of how it's restricting your breathing when you're walking, and then when you drop it, 
you're like, oh, I'm a bit more messed up than I realized. You know, once you drop it, yeah. you like <laughs> put your start pulling on that skier a couple times, and then you realize, oh, I'm having heart palpitations right now. <laughs> I better slow down. Yeah. Damn. Especially if you go longer than 100 feet, you know, that 100 foot distance seems to be about like your standard distance. But once you get into that 200, 300 foot range, it, it hits different for sure. Right, right. All right. Well, everyone listening, um, if you read the descript- description of the episode, you'll know that we're going to be talking all things nutrition today with Mr. Harris. And um, yeah, it's just kind of the a make or break as far as taking it to another level. You can put all the work in you want um, in the gym, but if you're knocking down whiskey and donuts on the daily, um, like my inner soul wants to, it's just not going to pan out for you. So let's, uh, let's jump into it. And I first want to just like go over, like when you're in your tuned up, dialed up, uh, Christian Harris competitive self, I just want to walk through a day of like what it would look like. So let's start here. You wake up at what time? 5 a.m. All right. You wake up at five and then what's the first thing you're putting in your body? Coffee, food, and when? When are you doing it? Yeah. So as soon as I wake up, first thing I do is brush my teeth. Can't can't be drinking can't be drinking on water with with ass mouth. So uh, you got to clean that out. <laughs> uh, but then I start with about sixteen ounces of water with lemon fresh half of a fresh lemon squeezed and a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar. So I start the day, um, get the, get the gut health feeling good, Mm -hmm. get some hydration in there. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I will start with some sort of caffeine. Um, so that routine is going to change. I recently purchased an espresso machine. So I'm probably going to be doing espresso. We see it. We see it on the daily now on the I am Chris Harris uh, uh, Instagram. Yeah, it's become my my thing as of late. Um, But I would typically do just any sort of caffeine. I got to get the body woken up at that point to coach the 6 a.m. class. Got to put your best foot forward when you're coaching, you know. All right. So so no, can uh, I go to? Go ahead. go ahead. You you go to the gym, no food. So you got your water, your uh, apple cider vinegar, your your lemon, all those secret ingredients there. Then you got your espresso, and then you're heading to the gym. Heading to the gym to coach right, cool. the six a.m. Right, uh, and we're in a fasted state. Got it. After six a.m., it's seven ish. Then what happens? It's time to train. It's time to train. So. Okay. I start with typically the monostructural work. So, you know, your cardio session, the cardio parties that you guys see on the gram, um, Mm -hmm. we're doing something like that. And because I squeeze everything into one long session, I will use that cardio um, portion of the training as an extended warm up, really. And then I'll get right into the PM session for those that follow the train with CH, um, I get right into the the bulk of the session there, all the strength work. Yeah, um, <laughs> I've been doing as well, just with work restrictions and having to just pile it all in. Do you ever start that first section of the, you know, the main PM section, and your your head still buzzing a bit from uh, the first part, the cardio party? Yeah, it depends on really what it was. Um, it also depends on what I'm putting in my body throughout that session. So when I am going from that AM to PM, I like to do an intro workout shake. And that was introduced to me when I far- first started following RP Strength. And this is back in 2016. Um, I've been working with the folks over at RP Strength, Nick Shaw. Um, so shout out to Nick for uh, giving me the tools to stay properly fueled for training. Yeah. might just be that I'm in Miami and I've literally sweat like 
a lake during that cardio party. I just just need some extra water, maybe. Maybe I got some heat exhaustion going. All right. So yeah, intro. It wouldn't work- be the water. I would uh I would definitely throw in like an intro workout shake and maybe some BCAs. Um I'm hit to get I'm you through it. that. I'm hitting it, but you know, you gotta come down this C gym of mine in Miami. You got to just take a taste. Of it. <laughs> you got you to take a sip of this water yourself. See what you think. I'll have but, to. Um, <laughs> all right. You're taking the intro workout. Um, so basically just like getting electrolytes, BCAAs, something to just keep you fueled. Um, are you having anything else throughout that second session after the cardio party is done? Um, I, the shake is enough carbohydrates, BCAs, electrolytes in there to get me through both sessions. Um, so typically it has about 50 grams of carbs in it. Um, yeah, you know, I'll do a scoop of my, yeah, I'll do my scoop of, uh, FNX BCAs, the recover, and I actually throw some creatine in there as well. And electrolytes, depending on the time of year, if it's summertime, I'm definitely throwing those in there. Okay. And and the session then ends what? 11-ish? No, 9 a.m. 9 a.m. How you wait, 7 to 7 th- You're you're moving. You are you're Oh going yeah. Through this We're summer. everything is basically like on a clock. Like I have it down to a science. <laughs> yeah, on our um, train on our train with CH, you definitely are uh you know, prone to putting in the rest 60 seconds after each set and that's it. You're right back to it. Yeah. Sometimes I'll go even, you know, a bit faster just because I know if there's a section where there's six to eight sets of something, as opposed to maybe three to five, then I know I I really need to make sure I'm diligent with the rest. Otherwise I won't be able to fit the session. in. Then it, then it spirals and it catches up to me. Right. Yeah. But uh, I guess it's good open training when uh, you're in the open and you're having to lift heavy in, in the midst of uh, having your heart throat. But uh, all right, so 9.30 or 10, 9.30, you said, you're done. No, I'm done by nine. Okay, None, done by done nine. Done by nine because I am coaching the nine. Got it. That's why it's important so, for me to to jam that stuff in. All right, so nine o'clock comes, and you're coaching. Still no solid food yet. Correct. All right, ten o'clock comes. Then what happens? We're done coaching. We are kind of uh, getting the things together, getting ready to head out of the gym. And by the time about eleven, eleven thirty rolls around, is when I'll have my first solid meal. All right, and and what's that usually? My bread and butter, my go-to is some sort of egg white omelet. So uh, carton egg whites with um, any sort of mixed veggies, whatever whatever flavor I'm feeling that week. Could be mushrooms, onions, peppers, all those sorts of things mixed up in an omelet. Um, and then my carbs will be the oatmeal and fruit. Oh, nice fruit, big right? big meal what you got like a cup of uh oatmeal or what's your serving size there usually yeah it's a, it's about a cup i can go through like my numbers maybe later on um but it's about a cup of oatmeal i'll throw like a tablespoon of chia seeds in there uh some cinnamon almond milk i'll microwave that and then throw in um like a banana Blueberries, strawberries, chopped up, some honey for some added taste as well as carbs. And uh, I usually don't really have many fats in that meal. It's a very high carbohydrate meal. So refueling that's about in it. the long session. Yeah. All right. So yeah. now it's 11 ish, right? And you had that meal. When's our next one? About one to two o'clock. All right, so pretty pretty quick, about a two hour, uh, three hour window, and then what do we have? Sandwich. A sandwich. All a right. Sandwich. Give us, the, <laughs> give, give us the details. We're all here listening. 
sounds tedious to you probably right now to just personally spit it out, but like, hey, we want to look and perform like Christian Harris. So tell us the deets. Give it to us. You got, you got your sandwich. Yeah, so, and, uh, so we're going – we're going sandwich. We're going Dave's Killer Bread just to kind of save a few carbs there. All right. We could save some carbs. We get, we get some more food in there. So we're going to go Dave's Killer Bread. We're going to go um, Hellman's Light Mayo. Cut down on the fat. You get to add more fat. Um, turkey, provolone, um, arugula tomato, salt, pepper on Dave's killer. That's going to get me about half of my carbs for that meal. So I'll either have, I don't know, either sweet potato or another piece of fruit of some sort to make up the, uh, the extra carbs. And this meal is usually a little bit higher in fat. So I can have like peanut butter or either if I'm not having a piece of fruit, then then I can definitely have a snack that has um, a higher fat plus carbohydrate content to uh, hit my numbers. Okay. A donut would work uh, well there. Oh yeah, donut, huh? Are, all right. Yeah. Let me ask you this: You just brought up a donut. Are you a numbers are numbers believer, or are you a they gotta be the numbers and clean believer? I'd say about 94% of the time I'm a uh, the numbers need to be clean for me. Yeah. So I try to stay away from okay, okay. bad sugar, but it yeah, depends I, on where I'm at. It, yeah, it gets to it, it comes down to like performance too. It's like you know, you know, you could get all of your carbs in a little slice of app high or something like that, but that's not going to be fueling you uh, as efficiently as possible for that next day of training. That's for sure. Yeah. Um, all right. So that's one o'clock. Oh yeah. I wanted to ask about your, uh, the deli meat. Are you like particular, like it's gotta be whole foods organic or like, are you bougie in that way? Or is it just whatever you get, you get. Yeah. I mean, I try to make the best choices. So if, you know, I have like Applegate farms or something like that, more readily available i'll always go with that as opposed to like no name brand like supermarket if that yeah. makes sense yep all right uh so we got our our morning routine we got our 11 ish meal we got our one ish two ish meal then when when's the next meal uh the next one's typically around five or six okay. um and this, I will pretty much just use the food that is provided to me by Redefined Meals. They're a local food prep company. Um, my go-to from them is their salmon. They make a very good salmon filet. That's my jam. Um, so I'll go with one and a half filets of salmon. And then this is where uh, the meal can can go either way. If I'm going sweet potato, I like to do like a sweet type of barbecue, like maybe an Asian style barbecue sauce on the sweet potato and the salmon and then whatever veggie on the side. Usually if I do white rice, I like to go more like Mexican type flavor. So I'll do Mex uh, white rice with like a, like a salsa verde or um, this, the brand hers makes an avocado a spicy avocado dressing that's really good. And then whatever veggies. I like to do a lot of grape tomatoes or cherry tomatoes in there. Got it. All right. Keep it simple as far as someone. Um, you, what what meal company did you say? Uh, Redefine Meals. Redefine based out of – are they based out of Long Island or are they just – Yeah, they're, they're based out of Long Island. Um, started by two – young college kids and they've grown to a, a very big force here on the island as far as meal prep is concerned they've got retail locations all over the island now pretty nice. cool story all right so that's our five or six o'clock meal then what's next i know there's more there's one more and it's chasing the sweet okay so we're gonna chase the sweet we um 
we'll normally do what time is it? A, what time is it? Uh, it's like right before bedtime, so like seven thirty or so. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's early, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So basically, it seems like you're eating every two to three hours. Um, that sweet though might be even closer in proximity, just because you got to get to bed. Uh, all right, what's your what's your sweets of choice? Um, so I usually do casein as my protein source. Um, and then really at that point, it's like whatever will fit my numbers the best. I like to do an acai bowl. That's like my ideal go-to. Um, so I'll usually do that. Your, um, you make it yourself? From, uh, I make it company. myself. Oh, no, I make it okay. myself. Um, how does one how does one make their own acai bowl? All right. So here's the breakdown. You need the frozen acai packets. In my opinion, the best one is from Sabason, I believe it's called. Let me let me just double check that for you. Um, but that's the one I like to use. Sambason, S A M B A Z O N. I'm probably okay. butchering the hell out of it, but that's that's what I got. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> so I do the um, those packs, the original. I don't do the unsweetened one. Um, it doesn't taste as nearly as good. Plus, I can use the extra carbs at this point. So you would put one of those in a blender. You put about a half a cup of apple juice. This is a big key here. The apple juice keeps it nice and sweet. Okay. I'll do a cup of frozen berries. So just mixed, uh, you know, your berry blend, blackberry, blueberry, strawberry. Blend that up. Now I like to take a nice big bowl and layer it with honey first then put the granola at the bottom because that saturates the granola it's it's amazing <laughs> um then i'll take the uh, the acai mixture throw that into the bowl and then i'll top it off with some fresh berries uh banana a little bit more honey chia seeds maybe some fresh um macadamia nuts or walnuts or almonds and then uh mm -hmm. We're just having a good time at that point. All right. So chasing the sweet, it's uh, it's still pretty clean, though. Mostly like fruit-based, right? Unless uh, those packets you're using aren't the best. But I don't know. I, I can't see the nutrition facts. Pretty clean? So that's like my go-to for when I'm trying to be good. Mm -hmm. But... Um, that's what, that's what we're say, here for. We, we want to know, we want to, we want to, we want to aspire to be the best version of Christian Harris that we can be, but <laughs> hey, go ahead. Okay. Let, let's say you, you're kicking your feet up. You're, you're, uh, not being as, so when as, I'm, uh, on, when it's like, when it's like semifinals plus time and I really need the extra carbs and my body's craving it, I'll usually do cereal. That's right. like my big thing. Um, all sorts. I'll do Honey Nut Cheerios. We'll do um, uh, like a granola kind of cereal. What's one that I recently had? Um, Golden Grams is a big one. Lucky Charms. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't discriminate on cereal. So I just had a uh, pop uh, recently. Remember those? <laughs> I do. I can't remember. I can't remember the last time I've had them, but those were How good. Was that I was at Farouk's house, and uh, he has a two-year-old. His son eats uh, those pops. So um, you just brought up something interesting <clears throat> that I'm sure people would want to know about. Uh, whether – I don't know if you're using your, your whoop or you're just kind of changing how you feel because you just said in semis and beyond, you know, when you're putting in uh, more strenuous activity and you're probably burning a lot more calories – how are you differentiating 
you're eating from a, you know, a heavy day to a more moderate day of training? Is that an RP thing where they kind of help you? How do you, how do you do this? How, how, how does Joe Schmo me figure that out? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, so during those times when the, the training volume goes up, I'm obviously burning a lot more calories. I wear a whoop daily. Um, and that kind of gives me a roundabout of how many calories I'm burning throughout the day. And if you're not familiar with whoop, one of the screens on your home screen, um, gives you a running average of your daily caloric calories that you've burned. Um, so every day that number is going to change because it's the average of the last seven days. Um, so just to give you a little bit of reference for me, the past seven days, I've been averaging about 3,400 calories burned on a daily basis. And that's about exactly what my, uh, RP app, my macros for the day, the numbers actually equate to right about there. It's closer to like 3,200 calories. Um, so that keeps me in check right there. Yeah, you're basically in a sustaining phase where you're just staying uh, level. You're not trying to gain weight, lose weight, you know. Yeah, and even on the rest days, I try not to uh, – because I'm not doing as much. It doesn't mean I'm going to eat less. I'm, just, I'm personally just looking to sustain um, that number of calories because I did notice that in the past when I would eat less – on my rest days, I would come back the next day actually feeling a little bit worse because I wasn't um, sustaining my uh, my macros. Yeah, I hear you on that. I hear you. Um, I want to get into any let let's uh just give us your like uh, numbers, your RP numbers there for like uh you don't have to do per meal, but just your daily goals that daily? you're shooting for. Yeah, sure. Um, so my protein intake is 205 grams my fat that's your body weight are... two, you weigh 205 205 i'm sitting a little he's bit a, lighter he's a big boy <laughs> i'm actually sitting a couple pounds lighter than i have been but i'm sure it's going to start to go back up because the the volume on these squats is starting to uh accumulate here mm -hmm. um i don't know my body once i start squatting a lot i'll, I'll put on like five to ten pounds pretty easily um, but my protein sitting at 205, fats are right around 90, and then my carbs are between 380 to 400 carbs. Got you. And then you said you, that would equal out to around 3,200 3, uh, calories? About 3,200, yep. Got it. Um, all right, I want to get into – so anyone out there that's weighing about 205 or you want to weigh 205 or just – think you could look like Christian Harris. Those are your numbers right there. Okay. So just start following those numbers. Um, I want to get into when you made a decision to kind of dial in your nutrition on another level and what you felt um, difference wise in your performance or, you know, when you're taking it easy and not as dialed in, you know, when you can tell, uh, it affects your performance. Yeah. So I'll give you a little bit of a background on like how I got like really into nutrition. Um, I started thinking about nutrition more when I started CrossFit, heard about this thing called paleo. You might've heard of it before. Um, I did paleo for about, I don't know, maybe two years or so two maybe three years. Then I heard about this thing called zone paleo, which is like, dialing in the paleo mindset right so paleo is basically eat meats nuts seeds uh no carbs really and you can eat as much of it as you want um zone kind of like dials those things in a little bit more so you you would need to uh it's almost like a point system in a sense but basically you can't eat as much of it as you want then training for the games in 2016, one of my teammates, Becca Day, um, 
she was following RP and she kind of got me into it and the whole team into it. And that's like where the whole thing was born for me, uh, macronutrients and all that kind of stuff. Um, so that's like really when I found out about it and, and got dialed in and started taking it a little bit more seriously. What, um, what did you like more? Did you, did you like uh, restricting the carbs on the more paleo strict diet or you live in your life and love in the carbs uh, that you get to have on RP? Yeah. So that's a great question. Once I started following these numbers more, I, I noticed more PRs. Um, I noticed better energy throughout the day, better mood. Um, and from 2016 is really when I started to peak as an athlete. Um, you know, during that time, I've had my best years number from a number standpoint. Like I've snatched 330, cleaned 380, I've back squatted 520. Um, so my strength numbers were definitely at an all time high um, back then especially my conditioning as well. Um, I think the 2017 season, um, I had my best open performance. Um, I think I was like 16th worldwide, uh, first in New York. Like it was definitely my best year. Um, right around that time where I started following macro. So it definitely made a difference for me, especially in the beginning. Um, I think I got off topic here. <laughs> no, no, that's that's it. Basically, um, what we've all come to find as the sport comes to uh, sport continues to grow is that car carbs produce your fuel and your energy, and it's foolish to uh, try to go without them when training in such a uh, strenuous sport like CrossFit. Oh, for sure. I mean, it, your your goals definitely dictate your nutrition. Um, for those that are training to perform, you have to, it's not a, maybe you should, you have to eat to sustain to, uh, your performance, right? You need to eat enough to justify the, the amount of work that you're putting in. So it's super important. So the, I'm just going to round up about. The 11 a.m., 2 p.m., 6 p.m., and then bedtime suite. This is like a revolving door that that never stops swinging for you. Like, are you pretty much seven out of seven on this usually as far as days in a week? Um, or do you ever miss meals and then, you know, you got to try to combine your macros for another meal? Um, I think consistency is something that people sleep on. Um, or they lie to themselves that, oh, I'm doing what they told me to do, but really they're doing it two out of seven days a week, you know? or they're doing it seven out of seven, but more at like a 60% prescription as opposed to exactly what your coach actually told you to do. Yeah. So I'm pretty much about 90% dialed in, um, from a number standpoint, from the missing the meals, I don't really ever miss a meal. Um, I'm pretty consistent and spot on with that every day. Or you, tur or you turn into the hangry Hulk, don't you? Oh, for sure. For sure. Start, start, especially start green. Especially if it's um, a day during the week where like I had a big session and I'm not getting that food in to – to start fueling and recover it's it definitely makes a big difference um the whole fasting thing that's something i re recently started doing i'd say maybe about a year and a half two years ago now it was like right before a couple months before covid happened um i just found that my routine in the morning it was just so busy and bang bang that I didn't really have time to like sit there and put down food. Um, so it was just easier for me to get my morning, the bulk of my morning routine done, um, training included without having an actual full meal, especially doing the monostructural work. My, I definitely work better on more of an empty stomach than a full stomach trying to do, you know, a 40 minute cardio piece. 
Yeah, when doing a morning fast like that, uh, we didn't break down your per meal macros, but is your last meal that's around 6 p.m., is that your biggest meal of the day as far as consumption goes? Great question. My first and last meals are my biggest meals. So the one right after yeah. training, or not right after training, but the one that follows training, and then the one before bed, those are the two um, calor- most caloric dense meals. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah, you got to time that out to recover right after that session. And then you're going to need some extra fuel in the tank nighttime that's going to do until the morning when you start to train for sure. Yeah, definitely Um, carries through. What am I I missing as we wrap this up? Anything else you uh, think that the the listeners should? should... I Um, I think we covered a lot. Yeah. I mean, I think from a performance standpoint, I mean, you can go on nutrition, a number of different tangents and topics, but, uh, from a, from a performance standpoint, I think this is a great start. I think we can definitely revisit this conversation. You know, if you guys ever have any questions on this stuff, if you email us or, you know, shoot us some DMS on some questions you may have, um, these could be some conversation points for the next time that we do a podcast like this. Yeah. All right. Well, hopefully everyone that was listening um, enjoyed this and that this kind of drove the point home that performance or aesthetic does not happen on accident. Um, Yes, some of us have genetic gifts that outweigh another person or or so, but this is uh, a lifestyle. This is day in and day out. And this is eating when you don't want to this is eating things that you wish you could eat something else you know you got to stay on track so um yeah as you're thumbing through the gram and it seems like it's so easy for people uh it's not it takes sacrifice and takes uh diligence and and uh and just uh i guess discipline yeah yeah right, guys i mean practice practice and consistency Um, you know, the food doesn't have to be boring. You can definitely dress it up with seasonings and sauces and flavorings of sorts. So, you know, if you guys ever have any questions on that, feel free to DM me. I'll try to get to any of your questions as best as I can, but it does not have to be boring. Yeah. Everything you, you said you have sounds great. So uh, I'm about it. I'm about to hit some uh, burger patties, brown rice with some spinach here. Got me some barbecue sauce. About to go in. Listen, that sounds right, good dude. to me. <laughs> Yo, I'm, I'm, I'm about to turn green. I'm actually getting angry <laughs> right now. So we better end this thing before I eat my microphone. <laughs> <laughs> All right, my man. All right. That's, that's Christian Harris, everyone. I uh, appreciate you. All right. Thanks again for tuning in to Fast Lift Heavy Podcast. This is Joe Roscoe uh, of the pod. Don't forget about our online training program, Move Fast, Lift Heavy. You can check that out at movefastlifttheavy.com or go to mflhtrain.com. You can find a lot of that stuff on our Instagram at Move Fast, Lift Heavy. All right, until next time, we'll see you later. My name is Christian Harris. I'm a CrossFit athlete, coach, trainer, founder of Move Fast the MFLH has always been more than just apparel. It's a way to train, it's a lifestyle to live, and now we've leveled up that mantra by creating our online training platform. Move Fast Lift Heavy now provides personal online programming. The programming can be done either in a gym, with a garage gym set up, or even from the comfort of your own home with a dumbbell or even at body weight. This isn't just your typical workout block. You'll have unlimited access to our coaching staff to ask questions and submit technique videos. MFLH has always been more than just an apparel line. Now you can be a part of the team. Click the link to get started. Let's get to work.